Hello, welcome back to Cryptic Woodworks. We're once again looking at our cipher wheel, one of the items that we make here at Cryptic Woodworks, and how we can create more types of ciphers with it. So yesterday we looked at the shift cipher, which is easy to create, it's kind of fun to make, but it's actually fairly simple to beat. So if you think about it on a shift cipher, since we only turn, turn the inner wheel once, each letter on the outer ring can have at most one combination on the inner ring, so you really have 26 possibilities for each letter. You can almost write those out by hand on a message and try to break it, see which one forms uh, a real message. So we can help start to get around some of that easiness by creating a message with multiple indexes. Now what we'll do is instead of setting the wheel just once at the beginning, we're going to change the setting of the wheel a few times throughout the message. So we've got a new message here, meet at three, and we're going to encode that with a couple of different wheel settings. So just like before, we'll turn our wheel a bit. We'll pick an index, for instance, how about if I use E and N, and then we write that down, same as before. And then we start to encode our letters. So we find M, that's V, E's, Obviously, it's part of our index, so we know those are N. And T, that's a C. Now, instead of just continuing to encode the rest of the message, we'll go ahead and set a new index. How about if we use T and W? We write that down. And again, with the uppercase, lowercase, to tell us it's an index. And then we can encode the next word. So A is D, and T is W. And then we can turn the wheel again to encode our last word. And how about if we use Z and W? So we write that down. And then we start encoding our letters. T is Q. H is E, R, where's R? Here it is, it's O, and then finally the E is B, we write down two of those, and we have a new message. So we can see it looks a little bit different than before. We have the three indexes in it that all begin with a capital letter followed by a lowercase letter. <clears throat> What you can also see happening is that E is used a couple of times in the message, but yet the reference letter for it is different in each of those, which means it's a little harder to work that out using things like frequency analysis, where you know letters like E and S are used a lot in words, so you can start looking for letters that show up a lot here, but that won't work as well this way. Now, if we want to decode it, it works just the same as before. So we see E and N, we see the capital letter, the lowercase, we know that's an index. So we set the wheel. And then we start decoding. So V on the inner ring is M, N is E, and C is T, of course. And then we hit the index that says turn the wheel again. So we'll do that and we'll set the index to T and W. There we go. And then we translate the next portion, which is D. On the inner ring is A. And W on the inner ring is T. And then finally, we get a capital letter again. So we know the next letter, lowercase w, that's our index, so we change that again. And then finally we decode the last portion. So we see q, that's t. We see e, that's h. We see o, that's r. And then finally we get the b's, which is our e's. So there you have it. Now you can create a more advanced cipher using the exact same cipher wheel. And it's still rather easy to create and rather easy to decode, 
but not as easy to crack. Uh, if you want to get even more advanced, what you could do is you could start breaking words in the middle. So we could set the index here, we could set an index here, we could set one over here, we could set one over here. You can get pretty crazy about how you do these, and it all depends on how advanced or complex of a cipher you want to create. So thanks for, what? Thanks for watching, and I hope you enjoyed.